loves me. The Prophet ﷺ is being commanded to, stay, to tell the people, say to them, this is my way. What is his way? What is the Islam he came with? I call to Allah upon clear insight, basira. What does that mean? He has two meanings. And like we discussed today in the, in, the, in the morning, Allah can say a statement in the Quran and it has two meanings and all of them are correct. This is my way I call to Allah upon basira, insight. First meaning is when I do that calling, when I invite people, when I do the da'wah, I do it while having insight, while having knowledge. You only do da'wah when you have knowledge. That is the first meaning. Alright? So, ana wa man ittaba'ani, and that is I and whosoever follows me, he has to follow the same way. The second meaning, it means, say, this is my way, I call to Allah, ala basira, upon basira, meaning, I invite you to Allah, I call you to Allah, while I have clear insight, I have clear knowledge that this is the truth, I have no doubt. You understand? I call you, and I'm, I know what I'm calling you to. I have clear knowledge, clear insight. This is the truth. I know when it tabani, I and those who follow me. So if you want to follow the Prophet وسلم, you have to call people to Allah. And you call them with knowledge, with wisdom. And when you call them, you yourself have to be firmly grounded in knowledge. You understand? And then to show what is this call, you see what the call is about? Ad'u ila Allah, I call to Allah. That is the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah. That is the da'wah of those who follow the Salaf in the right way. They don't call people to their masjid. They don't call people to their sheikh. They don't call people to their organization. This is what we call hizbiyya, partisanship. The call has to be for Allah. If this brother is going to Masjid X and they are calling people to Allah, they're calling to the clear sunnah, he doesn't have to come to this masjid for him to be guided. You understand? This is the problem we have today. Oh, he doesn't come to our masjid. <laughs> what does that mean? Is he going somewhere which is wrong? If yes, then okay, that's a problem. As long as he follows the truth, he doesn't have to come to your masjid or to your specific sheikh, or let alone organizations. This is the disease which is affecting Muslims today, Hezbiyah. We can't do this event unless our, our organization name has to be put there. La ilaha illallah. Are we calling people to Allah or to your organization? This is the disease we have. No, if you come with us, you don't go to any other masjid. If, I'm saying again, if those other masjids of those, or those other sheikhs, they have problems in their aqidah, they have problems in the way they practice Islam, then okay, you can warn against them. But if they are following the same thing, the truth, wh why, what is this, a bidding war? This is a disease you should be careful not to fall into. The real people who follow the Prophet wasallam, they call to Allah. They call to Allah. Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah, he used to say, I wish everybody will have the same knowledge I have without them coming back to say, I learned this from Shafi'i. Those were true Muslims. They don't need to be known. It doesn't have to be them. And then though to show what is the call of Islam, wa subhanallahi, and Allah is exalted. The meaning of Subhanallah, listen carefully. Subhanallah means at tanzih When you say Subhanallah, it means Allah is free from any imperfections. Allah is far away from any deficiencies. Allah is far removed from any bad qualities. That's the meaning of Subhanallah. Anything which is not befitting Allah, we say Subhanallah. Allah is far from that. Allah is perfect and exalted. That is why in the Quran it comes when they say, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدُ They say, Ar-Rahman, he has a child. Allah says what after? Subhana, he is far from that. It is not befitting from him. He is glorified and exalted from that. You understand? 
So next time when you say Subhanallah, it should come from your heart. You're glorifying your Lord by saying He's free from any imperfections. Wa Subhanallah, and Allah is exalted, is free from any imperfections. Wa ma ana min al mushrikeen, and I am not from those who commit shirk. That is the call to Tawheed. You call to Allah upon clear knowledge. And it has to be upon Tawheed. Always the call is for Tawheed. And that is the way of the Prophet ﷺ and those who follow him. So when you see these brothers today when we just talked about the truth is not by numbers. He has everybody. Oh, you don't you listen to Shaykh Fulan? Everybody listens to him. Yet he is not upon this. This is the scale if you want to know who is following the way of the Sunnah, who is not. Look at his da'wah. Is his da'wah focused on Tawheed? Is his da'wah focused on teaching people aqidah? If not, leave that person. You don't need him. You don't need him. Because Allah says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِ Say, this is my way, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu I Allah, I call to Allah. عَلَى بَسْوِيرَ Upon clear knowledge. أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي I and those who follow me. So whoever, his call is not to Tawheed. Whoever looks down and plays down, teaching people aqidah, he is not part of this group, or is he? He is not. The Prophet ﷺ came to teach people Tawheed from the first day to the last day. Aqidah. What do you believe about Allah? What do you believe as a Muslim? What do you believe? And the Quran is, all of it is aqidah. So strange when someone can say he's doing tafsir of the Quran and then he's not talking about aqidah. But you can't blame them. Most of them, they haven't learned aqidah. They didn't never learn aqidah. Well, the Muslims, the Sahaba, the Tabi'un, the Atba'ud Tabi'un, the great four Imams, Ahmad, Malik, Shafi, Abu Hanifa, all of them wrote on aqidah and taught people aqidah. Because the aqidah is what distinguishes you from the non-Muslims and what distinguishes Ahl Sunnah, those who follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from all the other sects. Next he says, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah, he narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lamma ba'atha mu'adhan, when he sent out mu'adh ila Yemen, to the country called Yemen, qala lahu, he said to him, innaka ta'ati qawman min ahli al-kitab, O mu'adh, you are going to a people who are people of the book, Yemen, at that time of the Prophet وسلم, there was a lot of Christians and Jews and there was the Arabs who still worshipped idols. So the Prophet وسلم, he sent out Mu'adh ibn Jabal to go and call them to Islam. But when he sent him out, this hadith is reported by Muslim by the way, in Bukhari. He said to him, O oh, Mu'adh, you are going to people who are Christians and Jews predominantly. This is what we just talked about. Da'wah ala basira. You do da'wah with insight and wisdom. You have to know who you're speaking to. The da'wah you give to a Christian is not the same da'wah you give to a Jew. The da'wah you give to an atheist is not the same da'wah you give to a Hindu. Right or wrong? He told him, you are going to people of the book. فَلْتَكُنْ أَوَّلْ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ or فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلْ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ So let the first thing you're going to call them to Shahada to Allah ilaha illallah that they have to bear witness there's only one true God who has to be worshipped Allah he didn't say to Mu'adh go and tell them women have to wear hijab they have to but that's not the first priority he didn't say to go and tell them they have to pray they have to but that's not the first priority that is why he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَإِنْهُمْ أَجَابُوكَ لِذَلِكَ if they accept the da'wah of tawheed to worship Allah alone. فَأَخْبِرْهُمْ Then tell them أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ افْتَرَضُ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ افْتَرَضُ عَلَيْهِمْ That Allah has made obligated on them خمسة صلوات in five prayers every night and every day. If they accept to enter Islam then they can pray. What is the benefit of them praying and they're not Muslims? Tawheed. That is the da'wah of Ahl Sunnah. That is the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. which is the next hadith uh, we just read and we'll summarize 
And then he says both collectors, when they say both collectors, they mean Bukhari and Muslim. They have reported that Sahal ibn Sa'ad, radiyallahu anhu, he said, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala yawma Khaybar. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, he said on the day of Khaybar. Khaybar, the famous place where the Jews used to live, the Jews of Medina in Khaybar. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going to fight them because they broke the covenant. They had signed a, trend, a, a peace treaty with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They had signed a peace treaty with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They would live in peace, coexist. But then when the polytheist Arabs, the mushrikun of the Arabs, they came to attack the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle called the Battle of the Ditch, Ghazwa to Khandaq, or Lahzab. These Jews, they broke the covenant, they betrayed the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they joined the others to fight against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah defeated those people by sending a wind to them. Surah Al-Ahzab. Now they face them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَعُتِيَانَ الرَّايَ Tomorrow when you go to fight, I will give the banner, the flag, the Prophet Sallallahu is the leader. But every army, there has to be the leader of the army who's given the flag. And even in the army, you have different battalions, different groups. Every battalion can have his leader with the flag. And before when they used to fight, the flag has to stay up. If the flag falls, then you are defeated. You understand? So he said, La'utiyana raya tomorrow will give the banner. Ghadan tomorrow, Rajulan, a man, يحب الله ورسوله, a man who loves Allah and His Messenger. ويحبه الله ورسوله, and Allah and His Messenger love him. That is the greatest thing we can achieve as Muslims. That Allah loves you, His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loves you. Not only that, this is a testimony that this man is a true believer. He really loves Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. يَفْتَحُ اللَّهُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ And Allah will give him victory tomorrow. He'll be the leader and will get victory. Subhanallah. He got the, the dunya. He's a great warrior who'll get victory. And the akhirah is someone Allah loves him. Ya Allah. The Sahaba when they hear this kind of stuff, when they hear this, they are in another state. فَبَاتَ nas يَدُوكُونَ لَيْلَتَهُمْ أَيُّهُمْ يُعْتَاهَا So the people, they all stayed awake. They couldn't sleep. Who is this special person? Nobody could sleep. فَلَمَّا أَسْبَحُوا غَدًا When they woke up the next morning, غَدَوْا عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى سَلَّمْ كُلُّهُمْ يَرْجُوا يُعْتَاهَا all of them flocked to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sitting close to him hoping he'll be the person to be given that banner. They used to rush to do good. In fact, one narration says, Umar, Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, so I used to walk past the Prophet so that he can just call me. Then I would walk again, and then walk again. They used to respect him. They can't just come and say, oh, Mr. Allah, give it to me. They had respect. He said, I would walk in front of him, hoping he'll call me. Imagine Umar. Isn't he going to Jannah already? Huh? Yet they were rushing to do good. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, أَيْنَ عَلِيُّ بْنَ بِي طَالِبْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ Where is Ali ibn Abi Talib? فَقَالُوا They said, هُوَ يَشْتَكِ عَيْنَيْهِ He is complaining about his eyes. He couldn't even see. They traveled. He got some eye disease. He couldn't even see. فَأَرْسَلُوا إِلَيْهِ So they sent for him. فَأُوْتِيَا بِهِ they carried him to the Prophet ﷺ. They brought him. فَبَصَقَ فِي عَيْنَيْهِ The Prophet ﷺ, he spit on his eyes. Huh? فَبَرَأَ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ بِهِ وَجَعَ He was cured as if he never suffered anything. The Prophet ﷺ, he is a blessing. Everything which comes from him is a blessing. Everything of the Prophet ﷺ has barakah. And only him. There's no other sheikh today who, if you touch his hand, you have barakah. You have to do this. La. That is not Islam. And whatever they parade around the world now say, the hair of the Prophet ﷺ. How did you get that? 
But anyway, the Prophet Sallallahu is spit in his eyes and he was cured. فَعَتَاهُ الرَّاءِ He gave him the banner. فَقَالَ And he said, listen now. He said to him, أُنْفُذْ عَلَى رِسْلِكْ Go calmly. حَتَّى تَنْزِلَ بِسَاحَتِهِمْ Until you reach their boundaries. ثُمَّ دْعُوهُ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ Listen. And this is the intention of al-jihad in Islam. Jihad does not mean shedding blood. Jihad does not mean shedding blood. Islam is not a religion of shedding blood. They are going to fight. The first thing, first condition, when you go, call them to Islam. Before you fight them, you have to call them to Islam. وَأَخْبِرُوهُمْ بِمَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنْ حَقِّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And inform them about the rights of Allah over them. For Allah, because Allah, by Allah, لَأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدٍ For Allah to guide through you, one person. For Allah to bring to Islam, one person, through you. خَيَرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمُرِ النَّعَمِ It is better than the red camels. The red camels is the most prized, most expensive property of the Arabs back then. It's like saying today, it's like it's for Allah to guide one person through you is better than having your own private jet. Da'wa to Tawheed. Da'wa to Tawheed. So if they go to fight, they have their weapons, everybody ready to fight, and they call them, come to Islam. They give them da'wah. If they accept, what do they do? They say, oh, you still have to kill them? No, a'udhu billah. These are people with corrupted minds today. They don't tell, this is Islam. That is not Islam. If they accept, there's no fighting. You understand? But it shows you the importance of Tawheed and calling people to Tawheed. We'll stop here and continue tomorrow, insha'Allah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik shanallah ilaha ilaha anta astaghfiruka tubilaka.